to tell you a little bit about how I like to teach blowing, proper air support for the clarinet, and also show you one of my favorite tools to use to diagnose if a student is using proper air and proper embouchure. You likely, as a teacher, already have some great systems to teach students how to sit with good posture and how to blow. And I might just talk about how clarinet may be different from some other wind instruments. I think for clarinet, it's useful to imagine that we use the fastest possible airstream, probably a more condensed airstream than most other instruments. And I don't change that from the lowest note to the highest note. For the most part, when you're teaching beginning to intermediate students, it's useful for them to imagine they are a human air hose that puts out really, really fast air. And in fact, something that really helps students to get the image of how they want their air to use is the image of a hose with a spray valve attached to it. If we're not thinking too much about how we blow, we tend to use a medium spray. And for clarinet, we want to adjust that spray valve to like power wash, so it's really, really fast. If I'm playing, say, an open G, which is the note we play with all the holes open, and I'm using kind of medium spray air, I still get a somewhat decent sound. Although I hear a little bit of airiness or fuzziness in there. If I were to take that air, which would sound like this, and condense it, turning my imaginary spray valve here, I'm not using more air, I'm simply taking the air that I'm using and moving it faster. The same way if I was washing my car and someone had the tap turned on, I use my spray valve to adjust it to faster. You can hear what that does. I'm going to use my imaginary spray valve here to go from slower to faster and listen to what it does to my sound. Here's my spray valve. That's me going You can actually hear a faster airstream. So sometimes with my students, I will just have them without their clarinet blow as loudly as they can. If it's a loud hissing airstream, it probably has some good speed behind it. Now having said that, I have some more advanced exercises that really aren't that hard, but it helps a student get the feeling for how fast their air should be when they're playing the instrument. And this one is one that feels very unnatural, but it works great for the clarinet, so I'm going to share it with you. What I have a student do is put a hand on their belly button, and the first part of the exercise is simply using their ab muscles. I'm going to turn sideways so you can see this a bit better. Simply using their ab muscles to literally push their abs out and to do it in rhythm. So I might give them four pulses. Push, push, push. Feels very goofy, and students will usually laugh and kind of be a little shy about doing this, but I encourage them to do that because it really has great results. Step two. We're going to blow four loud bursts of air as fast as we can. In fact, a great prop to use is just a piece of paper. I'll have them hold a piece of paper fully at arm's length and blow very quickly. And the idea is that they're moving that paper almost horizontal to make this work. Now that loud hissing air that they've just done, I'll have them do four of those. And then I have them put their hand on the belly button and try and combine these two. And this is where this exercise gets really effective. It does not feel natural. It's not the way most people are trained to blow on a wind instrument. And yet something about it works great for clarinet. Hand on the belly button, blow out, and push the abs out. So my abs are artificially being pumped out. And that is an awesome warm up for how you use your air on clarinet. In fact, when I'm playing clarinet, I want to think about pushing my abs out all the time. It's, a, it's a, a muscle action that helps us use the right kind of air and clarinet. There's other breathing systems out there, but I encourage you to try this with your students because it really works. The note that we can really test whether someone has good embouchure and air, it's a special fingering, and I'm going to show that to you. It's thumb register key, first two fingers, and then I leave the third finger on my hand off, and then it's two more fingers here. Just so you can see what that looks like or even distribute it to your students, this is what the fingering looks like. It's kind of a strange fingering and this is actually an alternate fingering for the high G sharp, which you can see on that diagram. The G sharp that I would play like this. But it's a horribly unstable note and it really doesn't like to play well at all. So I wouldn't recommend using it to play a G sharp, but it's an excellent diagnostic tool. 
you just simply ask your students to play it at a nice strong volume. There's two super common problems that happen with this. Problem number one is instead of getting that high note, they get a low growly undertone. That's very, very common. When you hear that, there's not enough support for the sound. Now, although that might be embouchure support, 90% of the time, it's breath support. And so this is a chance for that student to imagine their spray valve going faster. The way I got that undertone was I had my air too slow. In fact, I'll start with it slow and then sort of use my imaginary spray valve to speed it up. And that was my breath going so if they can get it loud and clear, that's a really good sign their air is probably doing the right thing. Now there's a second really common um, problem that people will have with this fingering. Instead of getting the G sharp, they squeak. Sorry about that, doesn't sound good, but it happens really commonly with students when they try this. That's an indication that they are biting on the reed a bit too much. It's a very common bad habit in clarinet playing. And in fact, it's one of those strange habits because it has a purpose. People biting on the reed do get a little bit of support from it, and it kind of helps them even out the registers from low to high, but it's like a bad crutch. Although it has some good benefits, there's all kinds of bad side effects. It inhibits their ability to play from very soft to very loud, kind of keeps everything in the mid-range. It also really cuts down on the vibrant resonance that clarinet wants. And really, we all want to have the most beautiful resonance sound that we can. So this tool, what you can tell your students to do is use this as part of their warm-up every day. It's a hard one to play when they first, first play, but maybe after they've been playing a minute or two, just to play it initially loud and clear. And if they can get that note loud and clear and then immediately play whatever they were working on, they're usually going to sound better instantly. Now for your really advanced students, if you can get them to play this unstable fingering really softly, they can do anything on clarinet as far as tone goes. It's like the ultimate tone tester, fixer upper. And back to that breathing exercise I was doing earlier, the way to train to do this is to do those huffs of air where their abs are pushing out while they're playing this note. Now, this doesn't sound beautiful by any means. It's an exaggerated exercise to train the body to move with fast air and the embouchure to be in the right shape. So it doesn't sound good, but it really helps teach the body how to do what we want it to do. So what I would do is take that note and kind of huff it. I'm not letting my air pressure go down to zero, but I'm sending these bursts through and then trying to get softer. This is like I'm washing a car with a hose and someone is turning the tap down. So as there's less water, we have to turn the valve faster. And kind of as I get softer and I'm using less air, I still have to adjust the air to move it faster. My spray valve are my ab muscles. So here's what it would sound like. Now, when they're first doing this, it can be hard just to play that note loudly then it's hard to play it mezzo forte. When they get down to about piano and you can start huffing it, then I tell them to gradually lengthen those huffs. So I might have some short huffs that get longer and longer, and this is teaching my muscles to push out while I'm blowing. And so I'm playing right now about mezzo piano. Of course, getting your students to go to piano or pianissimo is the ultimate goal with this, but it's a super good training tool. You don't have to take it to that advanced level. If you can just get them to play this fingering loud and clear, you know they're not biting, and you know they're using fast enough air, and that's two of the most important things to help teach your clarinetists.